So I don't think it comes as a surprise that students from Ivy League schools earn the highest salaries. Maybe it's a surprise that it's not Harvard or Yale. Let's go into the data here. Um, my brother actually sent me this, so shout out to him. Uh, it turns out that the number one school in terms of median earning 10 years after attendance turns out to be UPenn. I don't think that's much of a surprise. You got Wharton. You got a lot of lucrative um, talent pool connections and search going on there. And I could see that kind of um, carrying the numbers a bit to that degree. Princeton, Dartmouth. I think this was all really interesting to read through. Um, so if you're curious, here, I'll slow it down and you can check this out. Obviously, I'll link the uh, support these. Every time I show it, try to support the links. Um, by clicking on it for yourself. Look at this. This was interesting when I was reading. While Penn is the only Ivy with median earnings in the six figures, the other schools report decent median salaries at the 10-year mark, and several cost less than Penn. Students pay the least on average to attend Princeton at $9,800 a year and graduate with the least debt with a median $10,450 owed at graduation. Cornell costs students the most. With federal aid, recipients paying an average of $37,000 per year to attend. But Columbia leaves students with the most debt at graduation. Oh, Columbia. Probably had to do with maybe New York and how it's really expensive there. I don't know. A New York City. Uh, a median of $21,500. $21,500 in loans. Now, this got me interested. Okay, how much different is it really? And they had a link to uh, the education department's what they call college scorecard. So if you're not familiar with this, especially for all parents and students, like I see this as a tool for my seniors right now who are maybe choosing between some schools and maybe they wanted a different way of comparing schools. Well, here it is. I ended up choosing seven schools right here, uh, USC, LA, Irvine. Caltech, MIT, Georgia Tech, Santa Clara. So it seems to have public schools and private schools. It's really cool. I didn't really want to add too much, but I think seven was enough of a, a sample size to showcase to you guys. Uh, first thing we're looking at is the average annual cost. So you can see which schools will be relatively cheaper versus more expensive. You can see the graduation rate. You can also see the median earnings, which is really interesting. Uh, obviously, Caltech and MIT as engineering schools, they're going to be heavily engineering focused in terms of their job and, and, and talent pool market. Uh, so that, that's not a surprise. If you go to Caltech and MIT, and probably Carnegie Mellon would be pretty high up there as well. Um, Georgia Tech, actually higher median than USC and UCLA. Again, these are averages. There's outliers and Obviously, it's, there's, there's nuance being lost in this, but still, overall net, um, some parents might be surprised that like a school like Georgia Tech, I'm not. Tech schools, man, they make, they make decent, decent, um, decent money. They, they connect really well uh, to the job market. Anyways, yeah, I think this might be interesting for parents, for students. Go ahead and check this out, collegescorecard.ed.gov. I'll put in the link below. I hope that this helped. See you guys around.